What's up, y'all? It's uh, Bear of The Bear Independent Channel. Uh, I'm out here with the boy bear. We're shooting the Ruger 1022s, and uh, we're going to post that in a separate video. But I wanted to show you guys our 1022s and have a little bit of a talk about the um, the 22 long rifle and the Ruger 1022 in general as an SHTF prepper weapon. Um, I get this argument all the time. So, but we'll we'll start first. This is my Ruger 1022. It's been coated uh, rattle can. It's got the high rings on it, so I can still see through. These are see-through rings, so I can see through to the iron sights if I want. It does create a mechanical height over bore issue um, if you're shooting in close because of the height over bore. Imagine that. But that's like, that's serious forklift operator stuff that most people aren't going to get into with a 22. But I've had this gun, oh boy, almost three decades. Um, yeah, almost three decades. And it has at least, um, at least 15,000 rounds through it. It can still hit. If I'm doing my job, it'll do its job. And I, I haven't shot it much lately other than to dispatch the, uh, <laughs> the roosters that need dispatching around here. But it's totally, um, it's totally Boba Fett. I mean, it's like all beat up and just awesome. It's a three to nine uh, Redfield that's on there. And yeah, I love it. It's a great little varmint gun, but we're gonna talk about the efficacy of the 22 long rifle here in a minute as far as varmint guns go. So this one is mine. That it, This was the first rifle that I ever owned. The Ruger Model 1022 Carbine 22 Long Rifle Caliber. This is my son's Ruger 1022 22 Long Rifle. Um, it has... 50 or 60 rounds through it and before 20 minutes ago it had zero through it so it's pretty much the same gun one thing off the bat that I noticed with this that's quite different than mine this new version is that the bottom metal is not metal it's plastic uh, it still has the same uh, basically factory horrendous Ruger trigger although this one is at least slightly more crisp than mine is and it seems like it's a little bit less um the trigger pull isn't quite as hard on this one which is says a lot because it has 60 rounds through it and mine has 15,000. so standard you know adjustable rear sight uh fixed front sight on this rifle we got uh we got this for 219 dollars on clearance at uh atwood's farm and home now, the other thing too is this is a walnut stock, but look, you can see the gaps in there. You, look, you can see daylight through there. Look at the top side, okay? And it's a, it's a nice gun. Look, see, you can see daylight through there. Um, so fit and finish wise, I mean, and this is a legit Ruger. You know, this is not a pretend Ruger, it's a legit Ruger, but and it's got this plastic barrel band on it. Here you go, son. Do not load, okay? Whereas this one, um, there's no, now it's not tight, tight, but there's no daylight through there. And metal barrel band, and you know, just slightly different things going on. But let's see. Yep. Standard Ruger stock, terrible trigger. But, you know, what do you want for a $200 gun? We gave $219 for that new one out the door. Now, let's talk about the 22 long rifle and the efficacy of 22 long rifle. There are some really interesting stories. Um, one comes to mind from uh, Vietnam. I believe it was a downed. Uh, helicopter pilot I think it was a helicopter pilot I believe it was a downed pilot who and he was like a 
like a country boy from Missouri, took out, I don't even remember how many guys, a lot. Almost like, I mean, definitely platoon size, maybe company size. Maybe not quite company. I think he only had 100 rounds with him. But basically, he dug himself in, found the high ground, and used that little 22 survival rifle, like the uh, AR-7, you know, I think Henry makes it now, survival rifle. Little 10-round stick mag, with no front stock. Used that to defend his position until people could get to him. And it does make the point that you can use the 22 um, in a deadly application. However, I want to be clear on this. I have shot raccoons in the head with this and had them sneeze. So it's all about shot placement. Now, there are many poachers out there that'll tell you that uh, a properly placed 22 long rifle or 22 magnum, I won't tell you where, uh, on a whitetail, but that one round will take a whitetail down. Mm -hmm. And so it's, here's the thing, right? Can you, can you kill with a 22? Mm -hmm. And I'm not advocating that you do. I, I don't, not, and I'm not advocating that you plan on having to kill anybody, just so we're clear here. In fact, this video is probably already demonetized, whatever. But here's the deal. I do not want to bet my life on this okay this thing is so tiny um, the foot pounds are anemic the uh, trajectory and accuracy is all less than ideal the reliability is less than ideal you know in the we're gonna post another video separately of us shooting these rifles um, and we had a couple of failures using you know this stuff this federal federal blue box 22 caliber, uh, 22 long rifle, 40 grain, copper plated solid, muzzle velocity 1240 FPS. I doubt it tells you the foot pounds on here. Probably does somewhere. But we had a couple of stoppages running this stuff. Now granted, it could have been because I was holding the, I had my hand up against the magazine while I was holding the rifle, so that could have been my fault. Uh, I don't want to bet my life on that regardless. Um, Rimfire cartridges are less than uh, reliable anyway. They're generally reliable, but they're not, in my opinion, bet your life on them reliable. So I have issue with the 22 long rifle for its stopping power, its reliability, and um, I mean, I guess efficacy and stopping power are basically the same thing. But it does play a role. Right, it's a it's a pretty good um, dinner getter. Right, depending on what it is that you're shooting at, you can definitely take small game with it. Rabbits, squirrels, you know, if you're into what you know, whatever, possum, raccoons. Um, your great granddaddy, great great granddaddy, used to hunt raccoons with a 22 and a bunch of hounds. So. Yeah, it can definitely be done. I've killed a lot of animals with this rifle. A lot. But I don't like it as far as an SHTF weapon. I think if you're going to make the argument that it's predominantly a survival rifle, yeah. And so what are the upsides of the 22? Man, it's lightweight. It's cheap to feed. They're cheap to buy. The ammo even today is relatively inexpensive. Um, Lightweight guns, compact guns, the ammo is lightweight and compact, you know, 500 rounds of 22. I mean, this thing is, here, this is 550 rounds. 550, I mean, this box, hypothetically speaking, would only hold, this whole box would only hold 420 rounds of 5.56, five, but in reality, you can put more in there, so... Uh, 556 five, is considerably more bulky than 22 long rifle is, but 556 five, hits considerably harder than the 22 rifle does as well. So, you know, I've been a long proponent, a long time proponent of the 556, five, not because it's the best round. It's not the best round, but it's expedient. It's a NATO standard round that's currently issued in North America and 
almost every patriot on the planet is running an ar-15 style rifle modern sporting rifle which means that we can trade mags okay and that's important i can borrow ammo from you you can borrow ammo from me that's really important now again the 22 rifle as a sentry gun maybe as a pest gun varmint control mm -hmm. as a dinner getter yeah absolutely uh, as a survival weapon sure you know and there's um i've had lots of people tell me t you need to do a review on those inserts that go in 12 gauges which allow you to shoot all these different types of ammunition ammunition from your single shot shotgun and the fact of the matter is, I don't need to do that because lots of people have already done that. And in fact, lots of people have already had this conversation as well. But I did want to, um, as humbly as I'm capable of, submit my two cents to the conversation because for some reason, there are 30 plus thousand people here who care what I have to say on the subject. So I don't love the 22 for an SHTF weapon, but for recreational shooting, like what we're doing right now, they're the bomb. For practicing and teaching mark marksmanship to people that are new shooters or need to brush up on their skills, like new shooter, brushing up, they're great. They're very cost effective to run, they're very cost effective to procure, uh, they're not terribly loud, they're fun, they're compact, they're lightweight, they make their good backpacking guns, they're, they definitely have their upsides. Where you lose me in the SHTF Tia Tawaki, the end of the world as we know it, man, is the application of deadly force in a combat situation with the 22. No, man. Can it be done? Yes, it has been proven in a combat situation that you can apply deadly force with the 22. But I bet you if you had asked every single person that was put in the position with that 22, if they'd rather have 5.56 or 308 or an M1 carbine or a Ma Deuce, please and thank you, M203, yeah, you know, anything else than a little 22 rifle, sure. Uh, they're great uh, as suppressed weapons as well if you're into tech stamps and paperwork and, and all of that. But because of that, they, and this is going to probably make some people mad, but that's okay because we're talking about warfare, right? They're great anti-dog guns. If you have watchdogs that you're dealing with and you have a suppressed 22 running subsonic ammunition, you can take care of a dog problem pretty quick. And again, I'm not advocating that you do any of this. In fact, I'm advocating against the 22 as the SHTF combat weapon. So I can get on board with everything but combat uh, for the 22 rifle. The problem that that presents for me is that one of my 10 C's of survival is combat because even for me living out here, that's a consideration for me. And most people are not in the same living situation that I am, that we are, that they have a much higher population density equation to deal with, much less than ideal population density equation to deal with. So if that's the case where you're going to be more likely to have to throw rounds downrange than we are, the 22 still makes a lot less sense to me than your standard carbine or main battle rifle or, or even a, just a deer rifle. 243, you know, 270, 308 Winchester. 300 win mag. I had seven mag, seven millimeter Remington Magnum is one of my Ava Arit rounds on the planet. I love it. So, point being that while yes, this thing solves a ton of problems for preppers, and it certainly fills a lot of roles for preppers, you know, for again, for traveling overland, right, um, as a sentry weapon. Maybe, maybe you, you have a scoped weapon and it's, it's just for PID, for positive identification. Um, you know, maybe it's for getting food. Maybe it's a, an anti-guard dog weapon. Maybe it's a training weapon uh, or, or all of these things, just purely recreational. It's a recreational tool that you use. It, it will do all of that, and I am in no way diminishing its capability in any of those roles. 
But in a combat environment, if you believe that you will find yourself in a combat environment, I think that the ability to protect your life by projecting deadly force, the 22 is absolutely less than ideal for me. So I just wanted to do a quick video for y'all to talk about our Ruger 1022s. Um, and there are lots of good 22s out there. Um, but I like the 1022 because it's kind of like the AR-15 of the 22 world. It has all the accessories. It has all the compatibility. It, you know, it does all the things. There's an entire, there's a huge secondary market for the 1022. So just like the AR-15, the interchangeability of the, that weapons platform you find with the Ruger 1022 as well. So not taking anything against uh, away from the Savages and the Marlins and the you know, hell even the Henry Lever actions. There's lots of great 22s out there, Remingtons, but um, none of them have the aftermarket support and the interchangeability that the Ruger 1022 has. So if you are going to buy a 22, if you're buying your first 22 rifle, I don't think you can go wrong with a Ruger 1022. Let me see that one, son. And they come in all kinds of flavors. Thank you. And again, we got this one for $219. This is their typical carbine model. And it's it's great. It's great. It's as the smile that was on his face when he pulled the trigger the first time was the exact same smile that was on my face when I pulled the trigger on that one the first time. So they're they're the same. So, you know, the quality is still all the way there, the accuracy is still all the way there, and they're great weapons. Uh, they're just not, in my humble opinion, great weapons for a combat environment. And that's where I draw the line on the 22. So for everything but defending your life and the lives of your loved ones, your people, your tribe, your team, your mag, your family, your group, your whatever, for everything but defensive slash offensive carbine, the 22 rocks. However, that one major caveat for me is in that role... In that environment where yes we have to do the tactical things now I don't want this I want an AR-15 if this is all you have okay avoid the fight sometimes the fight is unavoidable and I would love to be kitted up with anything other than a 22 long rifle if the fight is unavoidable so that's my two cents on the 1022 and namely the Ruger 1022 for SHTF prepping for you know and and this is applicable to homesteaders and all you know all types of preppers out there self-reliant individuals uh, neo pioneers all of that so I'm telling you on the homestead you really can't go wrong with having any of these remember two is one one is none you should definitely buy at least two of them and you know, if your husband or wife has a problem with it, just tell them Bear said it was okay. Shalom.